In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to save objects to the Home Builder Library to extend the available faucets, cabinet door handles, and entry door handles. While a majority of the assets in the Home Builder Library are assemblies, these three are just static mesh objects. In any base cabinet, you have the ability to add a sink and a faucet to the cabinet. After turning on the option, you are provided with the ability to select what faucet you want to add to your cabinet. So I'll be showing you how to extend the list of available faucets in this interface. In the entry door prompts, in the handle tab, you can select a category, then you can select the door hardware you want to use. So I'll be showing you how to extend the list of available door hardware in this interface. And finally, in the library interface in the hardware tab, you have the ability to specify the default hardware that you want to use for base, tall, upper, and drawer cabinets. You can select a category, then you're provided with the ability to select a hardware item from your library. After the item is selected, you can assign the object to the base, tall, upper, or drawer pointer. Then by clicking update poles, this will change out the hardware on all of the cabinets in your design. So these are the three types of hardware I'll be showing you how to save to the Home Builder Library. I will not be covering how to model objects in this video, because there are a lot of videos on how to model objects in Blender, but this is a skill that takes practice, so keep that in mind. Optionally, you can find 3D models online, and Blender has a number of importing options, so even if you don't know how to model, you should be able to download 3D models that can be saved to the Home Builder Library. But regardless, if you're creating your own or downloading models, there are three things to keep in mind when creating these types of objects. First, the scale must be set correct for your model. You could do this by going from the file browser here to the properties interface. And then if we go to the scene tab here in the units panel, you can specify your unit system. So here we have metric or imperial. Since I'm in the US, I'll go ahead and switch to Imperial. And then you can specify how you want your units displayed. So here we can use miles, feet, inches. And for this type of model, it makes sense to use inches. And of course, if you're using metric, then you'll have the ability to specify meters or millimeters, centimeters, things like that. Now with our units set, here we can select our model. We can type N on our keyboard to open up the sidebar panel. And then here in the item tab, we can see the dimensions of the object that we currently have selected. And so here for the Z dimension, basically the height of this faucet, it is set to 12.6 inches. Now I know just from this model that that is correct. And you really just wanna make sure it's not set to something really large like 20 feet or two meters or something along those lines. So just make sure that the dimensions are something appropriate for the model. Next, the asset must be one object. Now, when I select on this object, you can see that it outlines the entire model. That lets me know that the entire object is just one model. But if you're clicking on different parts and it's highlighting different parts of the model, then you need to make sure that you join all of this together. So you can just box select all of your objects, go to the object menu and click join. That'll join all of the separate objects into one. And third, the base point rotation and scale must be correct in the transform panel. And so for your object, you want to make sure the location and rotation are all set to zero. And you want to make sure that the scale of the object is set to one. You also want to verify that the model is positioned in the correct way. And the best way is just to look at the other objects. So here, if we switch back to the file browser and we go into the asset tab here at the very end, we can see the different types of assets that we can save to the library. And so here we have the cabinet pull category, the faucets, and the entry door handles. So since this is a faucet, I'm going to go and select that tab. And I can see here, this is going to be the available categories that are available. Right now I just have the sample library enabled. But in that sample category, I have these three faucets. If you wanted to organize your library in a different way, here in the commands menu, if you select open browser window, that is going to open up a window on your operating system that will browse to the location of where this library is located. And so you can see by default here, it's located in the add-on for the home builder library in the assets directory. And so here, if we go up one folder, you can see these are all of the different folders 
that I have, but it's possible to set this to a different location. And so by using that command, it'll open up wherever your system is reading these. So here in the faucets directory, we can see we have the one sample folder. There's also this thumbnail.blend file. This is the file that's used when it's creating the thumbnail image. And so you don't need to make any modifications to this, just make sure that this file exists. But if you wanted to create a new category or move some assets around, here we can just go and create a new folder. And I'll just call this my assets. And if I wanted to, I can open up these and I can copy not only the blend file, which stores the data, but also the thumbnail. So if I wanted to just take this asset out of this category, I can cut that and then paste it into this directory and I can move these around however I want to. You can also open up these individual blend files just to see how the asset is rotated and how it's configured within the drawing, just to know how you should be creating and saving yours. But now with this new folder created and this new asset moved over here, if we go ahead and just reload the faucets by just clicking off and on, we can see now we have the my assets folder, which has the one asset that we have included, and then the sample directory, which now just has the two. And so here in the my asset category, we'll go to select commands. And here we can save the current asset to the library, which is going to use the currently selected object. And it's also going to use the name of that object, which right now is this artifacts 99267. If you wanted to change that, you could go to the properties panel under the object and change the name of the object here. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that as it is. And we'll go ahead and select save current asset to library. Here it just verifies the asset name that it's going to save is this. We'll go and click OK. And this may take a minute to do, but it's going to go ahead and save that file to the library and also create the thumbnail image. So you can see here's the thumbnail for that. And now we can use that in our library just like any other faucet. So next we're going to go through the process of creating and saving a cabinet door pull to the library. And again, this isn't going to be a modeling tutorial, so I'll go through that portion really quick. But I want to show you the process from start to finish, how you create an object and how you save it to the library. And so the first thing that we need to do is we need to understand how the cabinet pull is modeled. And so I'm going to open up one of the sample ones. So here if we go into the library and then in the cabinet pull category, and then here we'll go and just select on open browser window. And we'll go into the sample category here. And let's go and just double click and open up this one. So first we can see that the base point, this orange dot here, is in the center of the pole. And it's also positioned in the location of where it would attach to the door front or the drawer front. And it's also rotated, the geometry is kind of positioned in a way as if it was assigned to a drawer front. And so if it was assigned to a door, we can see that basically what's gonna happen is it's just gonna rotate this up. And so we're going to model our geometry just as if it was assigned to a drawer front and the home builder library will do the work for us to kind of rotate it and position it based on the type of front that it's assigned to. And so now that we understand how that is configured, let's go ahead and start creating the geometry. And so I'm going to go to the add menu. I'm going to go ahead and add in a circle mesh and then here in the operator properties. I'm going to go and change the radius. One meter is going to be much too large for this. So I'm going to type 0.5 inches for that. And so we'll go and use that, which makes it much smaller there. And so now we're going to go ahead and model out the geometry. So we'll go into edit mode. And first, since I know that this needs to be positioned in a way to where the geometry is coming out in the negative y direction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type R X and then 90 to rotate that on along the x-axis there. And now the only tools I'm going to be using is extrude and bevel. And so here I'm going to type E to extrude the geometry. And then to constrain it along the y-axis, I'll type Y. And I'll just make sure it only moves along that axis there. And then we'll go and select that. Here we'll type E. And then rather than extruding out more geometry, I'm going to right-click to place those vertices right in the same location. And now I'll type S to scale that up. And then here we'll go ahead and extrude again along the Y axis. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and type F to fill that last face. And then here we'll also use the bevel tool. So I'm going to type control B 
to bevel that and we'll scroll up on our mouse wheel just to give it a bit more geometry. And then maybe we'll go ahead and do that in the back. So we'll type or hold down Alt and then click on that edge loop there. Control B to bevel that. Okay, so now that we have the geometry created, I'm gonna also shade this smooth. And so here we have just a very, very simple knob. Again, not a modeling tutorial, just create whatever geometry that you need. And here we're gonna go and give it a new name. So I'm gonna to go to the properties interface and we'll go and give this a name a new poll. And then let's go ahead and switch back to the file browser. And all we need to do now is just go to the commands and click save current asset to library. And then here it's just gonna let us know it's saving the object name new poll. We'll click okay. And so there we have it. So now the new poll is saved into the library. And so here, let's go ahead and create a new file. And here we'll drop in a couple different cabinets. And so here, if we go to the hardware library, so now we can see we have the new poll saved to our library. And so with that selected, we can go and assign it to the pointers that we want to use. So in this case, let's go ahead and first assign it to the drawer poll. So if we click on that, that assigns this item to this pointer. And then here we can click update polls. And so there we have it. Now it's added that poll and it's just updated the drawer fronts. And again, if we wanted to update the base cabinet, we can click on that and then update polls. You can see how that new poll is added. Now the process of saving a new entry door handle is exactly the same. And so we would just basically select this directory, we would model out our geometry, and then we would save that asset to the library. But again, we can always open up this geometry to kind of get a better understanding of how that geometry needs to be positioned in the scene. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we're gonna get into how to create and save new materials to the library and understanding more about how the material pointer system works.